Look, let's say you're socially anxious. Okay, so what happens when you're socially anxious? You go to a party, your heart's beating. Why? The party is a monster. Why? Because it's judging you. And it's judging you, it's putting you low down the dominance hierarchy, because that's what a negative judgment is. And that interferes with your sexual su success. And that means that you're being harshly evaluated by nature itself. Right? So you are confronting the, the dragon of chaos when you go into the social situation. And so what do you do? You're like this, right? You hunch over, and that's low dominance. I'm no threat. It's like, well, that's not going to get you very far. You know, but that's a logical thing to do in, in, the, in, in the face of a tyrant. So I'm no threat. You know, you look at the king and you're dead. I'm no threat. I'm hunched over. And then what's happening internally? How are, what are people thinking about me? What are people thinking about me? Am, am I looking stupid? Am I looking foolish? Geez, I'm awkward. I hate being here. Man, I'm sweating too much. It's all internalized, right? It's all self-focused. The, the, the eye isn't work. The eye isn't working. What do you tell people? Stop. Don't stop thinking about yourself, because you can't. It's like, don't think of a white elephant. White elephant, white elephant, white elephant. You can't tell someone to stop thinking about something because they get caught in a loop. What you do with socially anxious people is you say, look at other people. Look at them, right? Why? Because if you look at them, you can tell what they're thinking. And then you, you're, unless, you're, unless you're terribly socialized, and some people are, some people have no social skills. And so the reason they can't go to a party is because they don't even know how to introduce themselves. Like they're just, no one ever taught them how to behave. And so they're really good candidates for behavior therapy because you walk them through the process of how you actually manifest the procedures that are associated with social acceptability. But most people aren't like that. They have the ability. So if they're really introverted and high in neuroticism, they can usually talk quite well to someone one-on-one. -on -one. Why? Because they look at them. Well, if I look at you, it's another thing to do if you're ever speaking to a group of people. Never speak to the group of people. It doesn't exist. You talk to people individuals and then they reflect for you the entire group because they're all entrained if you look at one person they broadcast to you what everyone's thinking and you know how to talk to one person so it's easy so as soon as you focus on the person not you you push your attention outward you use your eye you push your attention outward and you start watching well then all your automatic mechanisms kick in and you stop being awkward because if we're talking and I'm looking here I don't know what you're going to do next, and I'm going to put disjunctions into the, like, they're like uh, bad chords in the melody of our, of our conversation. And the reason is I'm not paying attention. So that's why the eye is the thing at the top of the pyramid. It's like the thing that enables you to win the set of all possible dominance hierarchies is the eye. Pay attention. Pay attention. That's the critical issue. That's why the Egyptians worshipped Horus. That's why Horus was the thing that rescued Osiris from the, from the depths. It's the capacity to pay attention. What do you pay attention to most? What your right hemisphere signals as anomalous. It, it, it attracts your attention. It's like, this isn't going quite right. I'm not looking at that. Wrong. That's what you look at. That's what you look at. What's not going right, because that's, see, that's the terrible monster that might eat you, but it's also the place you get all the information. 